And of course, Paul Felder is coming in now. And the Tech Dog. The Irish Dragon. Uh, he's fighting at uh, UFC 223 this Saturday at the Barclays. And uh, he's fighting Ally Aquinta. How you doing, buddy? Well, I'll let you sit down first before I start. I always good. say hello too soon. I'm good. I'm, so you? You get, you get I'm good, man. Nervous and excited. I do. I'm always happy to see people. Drink, Cheers. Like both of us drinking water, huh? Yeah, lots of. I, I got a whole gallon of it. That's oh, only, wow. That's uh, only one today. Why yeah, are you carrying around so much just to make you pee? I'm going with the eight ounce. Yeah, we uh, we drink about two gallons for. I've, I've oh. been doing it for about eight eight days now, so it's uh, it's two work, gallons man. a day. Yeah, two two gallons a day plus my coffees and you know little things like that. What does that do for you? It's a water load, right? So it kind of tricks your body into thinking it's almost overly hydrated. So you're sweating and urinating more than you normally would, and then when you actually cut back on the water, it. Uh, you, you, you kind of still flush out for a little while afterwards. So it's kind of like a, just a manipulation oh. that you're doing. So you're yourself. tricking your body into pissing more so you lose more weight, more water weight in the last couple of days. Pretty much. It's pretty much exactly wow. what Who figured that out? Yeah. Like and just water in general. It, it, you know, people um, people don't drink enough water. So when you're trying to lose weight, it's it's one of the best things you can do for yourself. But uh, I don't recommend two gallons for the average. Uh, two for gallons the average, seems like the a average lot. Joe. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. A, it's a little much. What's the most you put back on a day? Three gallons. Put weight you put back on. Oh, I, mean, wait, no, I thought you meant water. Oh, no, 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 in a what's day. the most weight you put back on? You did three gallons uh, of water in one day. I've done three gallons of water. In a day. I used to do that. I like try three, to finish two, this, one. This bad boy. <laughs> I know, right? That's how I've been my nursing poor mom. It. I don't yeah. think she's ever had a bottle of water in her life. To be honest <laughs> with you, if it's not coffee or soda, I don't think she's. Uh, well, yeah, I like something. <laughs> I like some. I like some flavor in my beverage. I like something yeah. sweet. Yeah, you know, it's uh, tough. I it's think tough. most people are like that. Luckily, it's not a not a problem for me. For weight, probably. Back when we could IV, I I used to get up to like 181 from 155, at, and that's just in 24 hours. You wow. put on 25 pounds, 26 pounds in a day. Yeah, and there's guys that are still doing that probably without IVs. Honestly, how do you? How, obviously, with an IV that helps, but without yeah, an IV, it's a little harder without yeah. the IV because you got to slowly make sure you you know if you just chug yeah. everything too fast and you overdo it, when your body's that uh, you know depleted and sucked out, you're gonna you're gonna just crap yourself or throw up yeah well it's a whole thing yeah guys put on that much fucking i'm always fascinated by the weight cut yeah and, and with the nightmare people have to go through the week of the day before yeah the, and then all of a sudden yeah, get there and fight like right now what a tuesday we're i'm still eating good you know no i mean i wouldn't say good i'm eating and uh <laughs> but you know i hired uh, george lockhart so he's those guys are like a little team of ninjas man everywhere you turn they're like oh here's your meal here's your gallon of water so uh it's been a big help for me this camp. I just I I can do this stuff and not have to worry about anything. This is a big fight, you know. I'm fighting in Brooklyn and uh, and I I like fight now, a fucking animal. so I want yeah. it to be obviously everything, all my ducks in a row for this one. Well, one you're, you're gonna be one fifty five. But what do you weigh right now? Not one fifty five. Okay, but, you're, you're but you're good. Up. Yeah, yeah, it's you're good. So you have to lose more than ten pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But you guys don't like to say exactly what you weigh leading up. I don't want anybody to know. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah, any yeah. commissions what, what, yeah. out there knocking on oh, my door okay. or anything like that. But it's not, it's definitely not, uh, I know we've heard. Well, we have a scale under your chair right now. You weigh <laughs> in and, okay, 238 pounds. Yeah. This is going to yeah. be a hell of a. <laughs> it's going to be a rough week. Let's yeah. put it that way. How fucked up is it? Poor Tony Ferguson, uh, the main event, him against Khabib. And uh, he's on a stage doing his press. It's his last day of his yep. of his mandatory press. Yeah. And I guess he wears sunglasses indoors, and I really wonder if that had anything to do with it. There's a wire or something he tripped over going to speak to somebody he had, didn't know was there, and he fucking just tears, tears his ACL? Yeah. Is that uh, a... Wait, one, he, I don't know if it was... It was one of the ligaments. That oh, it was just a ligament off his... It was uh, LCL, maybe MCL. Okay. There's so many CLs yeah. in the knee. I, I don't really know which one it was, but yeah. He tore a ligament tripping over a yeah. wire? Yeah, just it was like... Tur I guess he turned on, the wrong way. And then we find out about all this on April Fool's Day. So nobody right. believes it when we all find out yeah. about this. Like, people were... All my friends were texting me. They're like, this has got to be a joke, right? Tony Ferguson's... I was like, oh, Dana's playing a joke. He's playing a joke. And then I, I texted my manager, who's Max's manager as well, and he was like, I swear to God, man, it's it actually, I still didn't believe it. I was like, all right, well, maybe they were sworn to secrecy by Dana. <laughs> Seems no. like a long way to go for an April I know, that's, show, that's, right? that's what I started thinking. I was on a, a group text with our, our, our unfiltered producer, with uh, Chris and with Matt Sarah. So Chris texts us, oh, yeah, he's out. And I think I wrote, like, fuck you, and Matt's yeah. like, boom, April Fool. And then when Dana's video, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, this is not an April Fool. You're like, oh, no. Nobody starts an April Fool saying it's not. Yeah, you can't, so right? I mean, that's... When you're in training, do you are you kind of conscious of that? Like, I have to go 
hard enough that I'm ready for this fight, but not so Injure hard yourself. that like I can't risk getting injured at all. It's that's where it's that's why so many guys do get hurt, man. Right. Because you're when you're when you're when you're really sparring, when we're actually chucking, throwing down, and we got the headgear and oh, man, you, it it's usually not even your sparring partner, the guy in front of you that ends up hurting you, it's some weird thing. Like, let's say you guys are sparring over here and my opponent's here and a guy comes flying in, went for a double leg, and as the other guy's getting taken down, hits my knee from the side and oh. blows my knee. It's usually something like that. Or as I'm going down, my ankle gets stuck in the, the crease of the mat or your toe gets stuck and it breaks. It's always some... It's Nothing not that you usually, could have prepared for. Yeah, it's not yeah. usually. And, you you know, a lot of times I notice I get hurt or banged up is when I'm trying to go easy. Because you, then you're not doing the things you normally do or go the way that you would normally go. So the other day I was even drilling before I left Milwaukee. And they're like, go easy. I was like, you know what? Fuck that. And I was like, let's let's just drill hard and realistically and we'll be safe. And we were. Because when you try to pull back is when you... You do something that's gonna you move a certain you. way that you're not used to moving, and yeah. you fuck yourself up. Yeah, you're not in the flow of how that that situation would really go. But who gets hurt doing press like that? The poor I mean, guy, man. That, you like, wear your sunglasses inside, man. That's, that, that's, I, I wonder if that's why he tripped over a wire. <laughs> Studios what, can be dark. He said he was wearing his sunglasses, so I mean, I probably would have left that detail out. I, that's exactly what I said when I heard that. I was like, I probably would have just said, "No, nah, I, I." I wasn't. Of course, I wasn't wearing. Was it a sunglasses. wire that he tripped over? Was that exactly what it was? I'm not even sure. I, I mean, it's to just tore a, a lig to tear a ligament though. When you trip over something, you have to be like such an athletic person. Like you have to be walking with purpose. I don't think I could tear a ligament. <laughs> Walk hard, man. Tripping over something if I tried. Unless you fell off a stage, you might have fell off. A he might have fell off like a little riser. All the way. Sometimes the TV studio has like a little. You're on a little platform. Yeah, well, from what I heard, he. He saw somebody that he wasn't expecting to see and turned to say hi and then tripped, is what I heard. Oh, so it's that person's fault. Yeah, I think they should be responsible. So if, you, if you're training like you were saying, right, and you're like, and somebody knocks into you and causes you to get injured, how long does it take for that person to not be in the doghouse? Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, theoretically, it's an accident, of it, course, yeah. but realistically, you just cost everybody a whole bunch of money. I guess for me, it would depend on were they being an absolute idiot or was it a real accident? Like, was there just a, you know, a scenario where we bumped into each other and it was nobody's fault? But there's some guys in the gym that are known to be a little reckless or, you know, crazy. So if that guy hurts me, then, he yeah, he's in the, he's in the doghouse for a yeah. while with me because this is... You know, this is real money that we're making, and that's how I make money is how I pay for everything that I do. So if I don't show up to my fight because you were being an idiot in the gym, then I, yeah, I'll be pissed. But and you, you don't an get accident. anything if the other guy doesn't show up either. Like, there's no compensation from yeah, the like, uh, if it, Let's say something happened to one of us this week, like Tony. Yeah, I mean, there's I didn't make weight, and I don't get my show money or anything like that. Yeah, nothing. If, if How about if uh, if your opponent doesn't make weight, do you still get some money? If if we both show up and if I make weight and Al doesn't make weight for some, you know, let's just put that in the circle. Yeah, I get paid at least my show money. Okay, even if you decide not to fight him, mm, that's where it might get tricky. If 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 the fight could be sanctioned and still put on, they might not pay, like Dana might be like, no, the fight could go on. You're just choosing not to fight. But you know, I I'd fight. So it's but if if they say no, he there's no way you can fight. Yeah, like let's say show up. okay. If the commission says this fight's off, but I made one fifty five, the UFC would pay me. They're they're good for that. And are you guys paying for your own training camps? Like yeah, you put that yeah. That's I mean, that's, out of your yeah. Money? Anything that you any expenses, and you know that's why most of these guys that aren't an LLC or some kind of corporate it's a tax write off. You know anything so I need, I I make sure that it's through my my you know my my business, Paul Felder. Right, LLC. So, but like, if you get injured, yeah, you're all out. the way at the you're end of a money, training man. camp. Yeah, that's why it's, you just spent all that money on the training camp. That's why you can't guys get now. upset if it's something stupid in the gym, yeah. or you like a guy threw a flying knee and shattered your nose. It's like, what do you do? Why? We at the end of the day, yeah, we need to train hard to get ready for these fights, but you need to make it to, to the fight, fight night. Yeah. We, we're professional fighters. It's not <laughs> like we're doing this, you know, in some bar drunkenly just because we want to get our our you know aggression out. We're right. Or athletes and, and fighters. So, Are you more or less likely, if you're in public and someone gives you a, a problem, are you more or less likely to be aggressive with them? At this Because I'm such a little dick, I know that I would use it for bad. Yeah, at this you point would. in my yeah. life, I can I can honestly say I would, I would, I mean, it depends on how many Jamesons were in me, but 
if I was relatively clear headed, I would uh, I would avoid it, man. Like I've done enough in my fighting career to know that I can I can whoop a regular dude's ass. I don't need to to go to jail for it. But back in college, you know, I, that would have been a different story when I was still trying to prove myself. I probably I was an actor too back then. So if so, somebody stepped to me, I'd I definitely had a chip on my shoulder back then because I was still a martial <laughs> artist and a fighter, but I was also an actor. So it's like, were you a good actor? I think so. Uh, what did you? Do? What were you doing? Were you doing uh, uh, I theater? Did, I did theater. Yeah, I went to school. You know, when I went to school at University of the Arts in Philly, it was, I mean, it was a full blown theater program that I that I went to. And was that in your head? Were you like, this is what I'm going to do with my life, or did you kind of know? Yeah, I thought I was going to be an actor. I thought I was going to transition to television, film, and 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 go that route eventually. Right. But I wanted to get the training in and get the experience. And I mean, there's live theater is, uh, it's amazing, man. It's, I mean, fighting is a very similar thing, just on a, I mean, a, a, a whole nother in the moment level. You know what I mean? But very similar feeling that you know that backstage you're in the locker room you're about to go out there in front of people so did you ever suck doing a play yeah I've done play, is very scary. I, I, and i've done yeah. plays that have sucked you know what i mean so it, there's been some where it was like i've gotten bad reviews yeah but did it bother you that guy sucked he didn't know what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course it bothered me <laughs> some people don't it pisses their... me off man it's same with like uh, these cri critics on twitter talking about fighting it's the same thing if somebody's like oh fella well, he's overrated I'm like oh, you what are you talking about you don't know who i am you don't know yeah so, yeah it's just the same exact thing anybody's a anything comedy you know acting fighting anytime anybody criticizes some guys are good at letting it roll off others aren't i'm not the best at letting it roll off i pretend <laughs> to but I'm not so but much. it eats at you a little bit but it eats at me, yeah. well you're i was reading that there your fight People are already saying like this could be fight of the night right no, here. This I could be fight of the night. That. Yeah, yeah, because now expectations are up here. So even if you have an okay fight, yeah, people are going to go like, oh, I expected better from yeah. him. These guys, they didn't really go for it. <laughs> right? What are you talking about? Both our orbitals are broken, and we, <laughs> neither one of us have a hand that's not broken. So. But sometimes two guys respect each other a lot in the first round. They're kind of feeling each other out, and right. nobody wants to make a mistake because both guys, yeah. each one knows they can get knocked out yeah. if they fuck up. It was like, this is that fight. Perry against Ponzinibbio. Now. They're being careful. Yeah. But it's also the great yeah. thing about Twitter, especially with UFC. Is that like you guys have spent your whole lives kind of mastering this craft, and then I can just jump on Twitter after watching three oh, fights yeah. and be like, they're not even hitting each other. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and you got to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, but that goes for anything, right? I mean, yeah. I can listen to a show and go on Twitter and be like, man, that absolutely sucked. These guys don't know what they're talking about, and you know, they're not funny at all. Right? You know, so oh, please, we hear that every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Same yeah. as we hear, oh, you suck, bro. Or Al's gonna knock your face off. I'm like, and I, I try to tweet. At most of these people nicely right. and retweet their tweets when they say negative things about me. I found that that is the best. You retweet negative tweet. tweets? All, all of them. Why? Anytime anybody's, because then my fans go ham on them. They just attack everybody and I don't have to do anything. Right. And it's just, it's funny to me. It's like, look, I recognize that you said something negative and I don't, I, I'm, Showing that I don't care, but, but I'm gonna let you guys really take that. Yeah. You do care a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You want to see somebody else attack them? I want to see. Yeah, I want yeah, to see my like fan, see that. the Irish Dragon fans, uh, get in there. Did you grow up in a rough area, Philadelphia? Again, we've talked about this before, but Philadelphia is a very rough area, and there's a, a lot of, for some reason, a lot of fighters come from Philly. Boxers, yeah, uh, UFC guys. That people, people in Philadelphia just like to fight. Yeah, I grew up um, in a neighborhood Grace Ferry, and uh, it's it's definitely not a. Uh, a nice area. I, when I was really little, it wasn't so bad. There were still some, you know, baseball programs and sports programs. And I got older and over, you know, it, people were moving out and abandoning the neighborhood. Drugs got really bad. Heroin started getting really bad in that area. And um, luckily when I was a junior in high school, my family uh, was able to move out of there. But up until that point, you know, the years that counted, the fighting years, the scrapping on the street, yeah, there was a lot. Of, we just, like I talked about before when we when I was on the show with you, we uh, we would fight over anything, man. It was just a fist fight would break out. That wasn't like a big deal to me. And now it's like, God, the kids these days, you, you get punched and it's like, you know, that person should be locked up for the rest of their life for it. So when you were, when you were trying to act in college, were you trying to like, find something that was going to get you out of that neighborhood, out of that way of life, out of all that? Yeah, I, honestly, I was just trying to figure out what the hell I was going to do, man, because I've never been uh, super book smart. I've never been really great at writing papers or taking tests. So if I was going to go to college, it definitely wasn't going to be for a degree in anything that had to do with really, really sitting down and studying. And it's not that I don't have intelligence. It's just I could give a 
crap about sitting down in front of a book and studying and writing a paper on anything. I had to, I've always been very active in, in my learning. So what acting was, I, I, when I switched high schools, I just decided to take an acting class. And that was, I, you know, I literally, as they say, I got bit by the bug and I, I never wanted to stop doing that. And I'd always done martial arts. So that was still something I'd always planned on doing, whether it was through acting or getting into martial arts movies or you know, owning my own school or something like that. But yeah, I, that was me trying to figure something out to do with my life. I didn't know what I was going to do. Are you still acting or no? No, I mean, uh, just doing the, the, the color commentary now, which is the ne next best thing for me right now, just because I'm still currently fighting. I don't really have that much time to, to take off and, and try to pursue an acting career, but it's definitely something that I do want to get back to when, uh, when I hang them up, man, I want to try to really get out there and, and get an agent again. But I still want to do the, the UFC and, yeah. and do color work. I, I love doing that. And that's just a fun way to make money in between fights right now. How too. much prep do they give you for that? Like when, you, when you're doing, cause I'm always fascinated with how everybody remembers how many fights, like the memories uh, that you guys have when you're, when you're announcing. Are they just, are you have a computer screen in front of you or are they have, feeding you shit in your earpiece? They feed us a lot of the producers are really good at giving you stuff if they think it's really important. And then on top of that, the research teams and, the, and, and all the guys at the UFC, man, we have just stats, stats sent to us. I get emails. I'm still getting emails for, for this fight, I'm getting I get emails every day for 223 about you know me and all these guys on the card. It's funny to to open my email and it's like Paul Felder's bio. And it's like, yeah. That was a very sweet boy question. <laughs> you were like, do you just remember everything? Well, when you do I mean, how much do they? <laughs> I know that they have to feed you a certain amount of things, but I mean, the, 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 as the, far as my job being the actual color like guy, they have some notes. Sometimes I, I have to do a, I have to do a lot more actual just watching their fights because all the keys to the victory right. or the highlights that are usually picked out to show. What they're good, that's all me. Like, they'll tell me, I need you to look up Tony Ferguson and Khabib and pick three things that Khabib does really well. And then, okay, what's Tony going to do really well? And I have to go and pick those highlights. So that's really where my job gets interesting and uh, in depth as far as that. But as far as the stats, we get a ton of really good research sent to us from the UFC. What do you, uh, what do you think of Khabib against Max Holloway, who's the featherweight champion, who's stepping up to fight? And, but I mean, he's obviously heavier. Because he's not, uh, you know, he's not having to cut weight. I wonder what he walks around at. Heavy. He does, right? Yeah. So I, so I read 180. Someone on Twitter said 182. Is that true? That's what Max walks around as a... I can't confirm that, but I know that I, just based on the eye test, I know Max is... At least, no, I don't know about right now, but I know that in, in past, he's gotten up over 180. Just he's, he's a thick Hawaiian kid, man. So will he be able to get down to that weight? I think he's, he, I saw him last night. He was on the treadmill. It was actually me, Khabib, and Max, and the whole Dagestani army uh, <laughs> yeah. in the workout room last night. And uh, he was on there for an hour, and he has, he was in high spirits afterwards. And I know he's working with, with George and the guys, and I know they had him fast. As soon as they got the fight, started a 24-hour fast, try to get in the, you know, ketosis, get him fat burning. And um, I think I think he will make it. I think he's a... He's tough enough, and he he does big enough cuts to forty five. So right, he's got the weight to lose at least at fifty five. Oh, that's right. He's yeah, that's right. He's forty five or so. Yeah, he's losing uh, ten less yeah, pounds. But he's it's going to be tough. So they're working out in the same room at the same time. Is it on um, opposite almost ends. Almost a treadmill apart from each other. Are they like snarling at each other? Like no, nah, you know, at this point, man, I think it's uh, and I think Khabib respects him for what he did. So yeah. I think he wants to smash him on Saturday night. Yeah. But I think at the same time, he's like, man, all right, hey. Way to step up and, and save the day and come in and take this fight right. that nobody gotcha. really wants anyway. And gotcha. to take it on short notice. So Yeah, nobody really wants to fight. We had him on yesterday, Khabib. He seems very, very confident um, in his ability to win this fight. Yeah, of course. Very that's, uncomfortable. That's, yeah, I, I couldn't see why anybody would want to fight that man. <laughs> he really you fight uh, him, too, and you got to fight the whole team of guys that are surrounding him 24 hours a day. I, went in, I couldn't even get on the treadmill yesterday. For, for 10 minutes because his team was on there with him. <laughs> and they're all really nice. It's just yeah. he's got a lot of guys with him. Yeah. Now, were you naturally good at fighting? Like, when you started fighting as a kid, and just, get, I don't mean, like, professional, I mean, like, just getting into fights, were you losing or were you winning them? I, I won a lot of fights when I was a kid. I, I was crazy, you know what I mean? I was the, the, the redheaded kid that got picked on. So uh, I, I learned to throw down <laughs> from, from a, a young age. My brother Tommy... Me and him used to box with winter mittens on. That was our that was our glove. He's like, Well you 
you can go bare knuckle, I'll wear winter gloves. That was the padding. So <laughs> we'd box and we played like knee football. Is anybody ever played knee no, football? No, it was in knee your football. House? I played other knee games, but they were less pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was we uh both brought you. We to used to tape out a, a football so. field on our <laughs> carpet at, in ho at home and we had a football. And there was an end zone on either end, uh -huh. and you had to stay on your knees and try to get past each other. And if you went down, you went down. And we got in a lot of fights over that. Was stuff. it just? Was it just touch? No, it was you had to <laughs> smash him down. And I, I'm four years younger, so I played touch knee now, football. Now I'm the bigger brother, but what does he do now, Tommy? Yeah, he's in between stuff right now. He used to um, work for SEPTA, which is like the public transportation unit, and uh, you know, and that was what my dad worked for. Uh, my brother, um, younger brother John, works for SEPTA, so. Um, but then I fight none of those guys train or fight. No, no, I could never I could never get anybody to do it I always wanted You know one of my brothers to to jump on it with me I feel like I almost convinced my older brother a couple times to come and, and start doing jujitsu I don't think it's too late. I think we can still rope him in and uh, get him training a little bit. Just keep him Keep him busy. You know, he can scrap he can definitely fight but for a guy that can Scrap on the street, you know what I mean? He's got a big Haymaker, big so right hand. Being a redheaded kid in Philly, now was it a racially diverse neighborhood? Was it a white oh, neighborhood, man, a black yeah, neighborhood? No, it split up. Yeah, I mean, there, and, and that was part of the problem. Is you definitely had your 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 units, right? You had the Irish right right near my, uh, you know, the Catholic church that I grew up literally across the street from. If I looked out my window, I'm looking at the school that I went to when I was in grade school. Um, and then you know the projects were right there, and then there was uh, you know like an Italian section and. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Puerto Rican and Hispanic section. So we, people battled, man. There was always, especially, you know, unfortunately the, uh, black and white going at it sure. in that neighborhood. And there was, there was news reports on it. Kids getting killed and shot in pharmacies and stuff when I was wow. really little, like that went to school with my older brother and for no reason. And, uh, yeah, we were on the news quite a bit. Um, in you know, at least local news in Philly for, for being a really racial, um, tense neighborhood. But, I Did you carry say, a weapon you know, with you? What's that? Did you carry a weapon with you? No, no. I mean, just his hands. Yeah, it's just uh, I mean, luckily, especially then, I nothing like that. I've never had a gun drawn on me or anything like that. But I've definitely gotten jumped and 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 into fist fights and stuff like that. But have you thought about how long you want to fight for? Now that you've got like you've you're good at announcing and you like announcing, so there's that. You know you've got acting that you still want to do, so there's that. You know, there are other things beyond this fighting world. Have you thought about how long Oh yeah. you want to do this? Yeah. Uh, I'll be 34 um, this month. But I'm Happy a pretty... Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pretty young 34 in the sport just because I, I didn't turn pro until I was in my late 20s. So it's not like I've been doing this, some of these guys, since I was 16, yeah. turning pro. But so that's would, a lot of damage you haven't. Yeah, taken, I would say right? three or four years, and we'll see. We'll see where I'm at. If I'm champion and I'm fighting for the belt, or I'm in the top five, I stay around. If, if, uh, if I'm ever starting to get called a gatekeeper, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Didn't uh, who just? Oh, Tyron Woodley just said that about Wonderboy. Called him a gatekeeper because he's fighting Darren Till. I guess that was meant as an insult. Yeah, and he meant it as an insult. <laughs> but to, to Wonderboy's uh, defense, I mean. When you're when you're at that level and only losing to a guy like Tyron, that I wouldn't retire either. I, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it when I'm the guy that's being fed the up and coming guy. Just because I mean I know Till is, but I think they honestly want to see what's going to play out with sure. Till and and Thompson. But I don't want to name names. But there's certain guys we know in divisions that it's like, yeah, he's still a name. He's still sure. tough, but he's probably. Never going to be in the in the top ten again. If I'm ever that guy and I'm just fighting to fight, I, I can do other things. I what can do, do commentating. I can try acting again. What do you think of what Ronda Rousey's doing, leaving UFC and going over to WWE? Hey, he, he, yeah, I mean, she's making good money. She's having fun. It's something different. Um, she's got the personality. Uh, people want to see it. I, I have no problem with her doing that. Does that shit get in your head? Like I, I watch the, when, when, like whenever Connor fights, he gets into people's heads. I think he got into Jose Aldo's head really badly. I think the he talking. Got into, oh man, the yeah. Eddie Alvarez. I was at that fight. You could see that it, it got the moment got to yeah. him. It was a big moment. Nate Diaz, you could fucking you could hit him with a piano. It doesn't bother. Like he's one of those guys <laughs> that you can't get into his head. He no, just, you can't. he's a fucking he's an animal, and he just puts his middle finger in your face, and it doesn't bother him. Right, yeah, you can't intimidate him. So I think that's why those fights go differently. Does that yeah. stuff bother you at all? When guys talk trash and all well, that kind I mean, of stuff. But is there a level of it that does get to you? 
Yeah, eventually, it just it, to me, it gets annoying because I, I grew up a very traditional martial arts background. To me, it's it, it, I know it's a fight game, so I mean the respect it has to be there to a degree. But you know, trash talk is kind of encouraged. It's okay. It's a show. We got to sell pay per views. I get that. But the way I was brought up, you know, you just it's about competition. It's about me just beating your ass and being better than you, and then. I have no problem with you afterwards. So that's where it's it kind of gets on my nerves a little bit. But when guys do it to me, it's it, it doesn't bother me in the way that if I like you, I'm going to knock you out and try to knock you out either way. If I don't like you, I'm going to try to knock you out and, and finish your night. I, I liked Stevie Ray. I really liked that guy. I was glad that he got re-signed. I was kind of upset that I had to fight him because... I was like, if I beat this guy, he's losing in front of all of us. I kind of felt bad that 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 scenario was on the table. It didn't stop me from kneeing him in the face and hitting him with elbows. It so. is easy to do to someone that you even like. Cause there's certain guys like I would never fight this guy. Right, like yeah. Kane has said, uh, him and uh, DC would never fight. Right. But you don't. Get, you'll fight pretty much. Uh, is there anybody you wouldn't fight? Anthony Pettis. He's my teammate right now. We train together. Um, you know, uh, we're in the grind every day together. We're in the sauna for this camp together. And I feel like there's no need um, based on where our careers are. And, and I feel like there's enough guys in the division that we could clear out that we wouldn't have to face each other right now. Other than that, no. But if you had to, you would do it. Man, it would have to be a cra- I, I don't know what I would do. We are in the same team. So uh, I, would have to, I would have to try to figure something else out and turn it down. or Because or, I'm not leaving that team. I feel like that's what changed my career, working with Duke Rufus and, and the guys at, uh, at Rufus Sports. So, yeah, I... I I, I couldn't do that fight, and I think the UFC knows that. How does the coach decide who to side? Because I, I think that, they, well, they, are, are, they would have to. Honestly, they would have to side with Anthony. They'd have to go with Anthony, and I I wouldn't expect them not to. Because he's been point. there longer. He's been there forever. He's he's the reason that Jim and Duke would say the same thing. That that Jim, I mean, Duke obviously has all his credentials, and he's a, he was a stud kickboxer at heavyweight, but. What made them even bigger was obviously the Showtime and and Anthony and becoming the champ. So I would never expect them to be like, all right, Ant, you yeah, got of course. Go. <laughs> what about uh, CM Punk? He trains there. Yeah, yeah is, he, How's he doing? He's doing so much better, man. He's he's he, he really has uh, gotten better since that fight with uh, with Mickey Gall, and uh, he he trains hard, man. I I think um, it's one of those tricky situations because everybody wants to be so negative on him and and. Uh, even early on, when I before I knew him, I was like, "Oh, geez, what's going on here with the WWE guy coming in?" But once I got to know him, you know, I can't ha- I can't hate him. He got the opportunity, and he's just taking advantage of it. And if they're going to give him fights, go for it, man. And he's going to be successful in June. I do. Yeah. Um, have they announced who he's fighting? They've announced. I, I don't think roughly. they have. Have they? I not that I've heard. What's his but name? I, I don't think it's official yet. But I th- I know there's rumors that it's going to be that uh, that guy. I think that lost to. Um, Mickey Gall on his debut when they when they fought in the UFC to see who was going to possibly fight. Oh, uh, okay. That's a rumor. I know. I don't know if that's official, but if that's the case, I 100 percent think he's going to win that fight. Wow. Yeah, good now, for him. Do you get uh, annoyed uh, during media days because you have to talk to us for like a half hour, and that's like a half hour of water that's not getting drank? <laughs> I'll and get to go it through, in. but get it through, right getting now. through two gallons is like you're sitting there, like oh, like it's an hour has gone by. You've been talking, and you're looking at that thing; it's still half full. Like, what the fuck am I gonna do today? Yeah, well, once I start uh, working out later on, after this is all done, that water will start coming out, and it I'll will. be wanting more of it. Yeah, it's funny. By the time you're done with the the two gallons and the loading and stuff, you start and you start narrowing it down to maybe a gallon or less. You're like, I, I don't have enough water. Because you get so used to just, <laughs> sip, you start getting thirsty. It's the weirdest thing in the world. That yeah. And then by the time you cut on Thursday, you're like, remember when I was complaining about all that water? She should have smacked me when I was complaining about drinking the water. Because then you want it pretty bad. You ever have to shit right before you walked out? That's always something I think of. For like, a fight? I, for a... I know I'd have to shit right before I walked out. Yeah, for a I've, fight. I've I've had to like. Run in the bathroom. I mean, not not right before I've walked out, but definitely in the back. I've never seen anybody have to leave the cage to do. What would they do if the fight was about to start? So <laughs> well, had I know shit? Chris Chris Weidman, I think, has got a story where he like ha- had bubble guts. Like he thought he was going to crap his pants on the way to. Uh... Oh man, I can't remember which fight. He's got a pretty funny story about it. But yeah, he was his stomach was not right after the weight cut, and 
he talks about that same. Uh, there's a few guys that have some pretty good stories about. There's definitely been people who shat in the octagon. Well, you yeah. lose the fight automatically now. The person no. who shits automatically, yeah, yeah you lose the fight. It. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, that's, that's a deal breaker. Right. That's not. Right. I know. Yeah. I, I just let them roll in their own <laughs> filth. Right. <laughs> but what did he run but back I, to the bathroom or no? I, I think he had time to do it, but I think he still had to go on his way out to the yeah. So what, kinda, what, if you're there and you have to shit, you just have to go through it, or, or will they let you run back to? the... I guess if you said, "Hey, I'm going to the bathroom." What, what are they going to do? What if you just reached over to the referee and said, I have to boo? <laughs> that would be hilarious. In between rounds. <laughs> if you just pull on a sleeve. I've always, I've always me, thought I it's funny. You know how they say, sir, are you ready? Sir, are you ready? If one guy was just like, you know what? Hold on. I need, not, a, I need a couple of minutes. I have to, yeah. yeah. I, need, I need to talk to my guy. I'm actually, yeah. let me, can I talk to my coaches real quick? Yeah. I, I have to make. Yeah, I have to make. <laughs> do I have time to pee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I pop out real quick? Yeah. You, you, you get hit, and I'm always uh, fascinated too when guys will fight 30 seconds after getting kicked in the dick. Yeah. Like it happens once in a while. You can tell it's an accident. But I guess uh, what's the best thing for that? They say to squat or to sit on your cup. There's like some weird thing they yeah, suggest you, you do. These guys tell you to, to like sit on your butt and 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 like bounce yourself. All the guys kind of jump and stomp to get everything to settle back down. Because sometimes. It, it it can happen where one of your testicles actually gets like knocked up into the uh, cavity, you know where you're, you where you know where things the, sure the you opening know, that's there. One of the one of the I won't say who it is. One of the guys who hosts the UFC podcast has a trick to get that down with his mouth. <laughs> so if he wants to, <laughs> and I'm not saying who. I'm yeah, not, it's not important. I, 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 I can, it I doesn't matter. I'm myself. Oh, I mean whoever he is, <laughs> whoever, whoever, it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I, I'm always amazed when guys are back to go fighting 30 seconds after they're getting kicked in the ball. It's like, take the full five yeah, minutes. Yeah, I think it actually affected uh, one of my uh, my really good friends, Jarek Gordon, who fought, uh, uh, I guess, a month or two ago or less than a month or two ago. Uh, Diego Fiera kicked him. And he, you know, being in the moment, he wanted to come right back. He wanted to come right back. And that he got rocked right after that. And, you know, unfortunately took a, his first loss in the UFC. And I, I remember talking to him afterwards just recently. He's been training with us this week, too. He lives in, in Queens. And I was like, man, I think part of it was it, you weren't quite all there yet. You know what I mean? You took a good shot, two two in a row. And then the second one, he's like, no, let's just, you know, all right, I'm ready. And sometimes you're not. 